Books. If you're watching this video, this episode of Too Early for Streaming was recorded live on April 15th, 2018. Enjoy! This is Trisha Lynn, and it is Too Early for Streaming here on the Geeking Out About channel. Uh, again, my name is Trisha Lynn, and I'm going to be your host for this new uh, way I'm doing my streams. This is your morning talk show uh, that starts sometime in the morning. Um, mm, coffee is a bit cold. Anyways, this is your morning talk show where I talk about things that have happened to me over the past week and uh, while I play World of Warcraft because why the heck not? Uh, so let's go ahead and just get started. So now we are still in Talador in the Warlords of Draenor expansion. And one of the reasons why I keep wanting to push with this is because, um, A, I want to get all of the achievements on my account, but B, I also want to uh, eventually get flying in here, which means that I will also be able to get flying in, uh, um, hopefully on my other accounts too. So this quest is all about uh, killing these guys. And uh, wait, why don't I? I am not able to. Someone must have already tagged these folks. Huh. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Yay, artillery strike. Yeah, that's one down. So, so what about this new format you say? Well, um, I am noticing that, uh, so I was watching the uh, Loading Ready Live PAX East 2018 panel that someone had thankfully uh, saved and uploaded uh, recently. And one of the questions that was asked was, for someone who wants to stream, what, what is good advice? And this is something that probably gets asked at every uh, panel where people are talking about streaming, because people want to do, people want to do this. People, the idea of making a living at playing video games, not making them playing video games is something that um, uh, people who like and enjoy video games have always wanted to happen. I mean, there, there, there are delightful movies from the 80s about this, the, where the idea of um, being a video gamer and a video game player is respectable enough to be seen as an actual profession that people make money at and can uh, buy houses and, and and earn enough money to pay a mortgage about and you know the kind of job that you don't really need a uh, advanced degree in or the kind of job where uh, it doesn't take a lot of schooling just things doing things you already know how to do and that you love doing as opposed to the soul-crushing mind-numbing things that our parents did such as accounting and being a retail manager of a um of a of a of a kmart for example for examples that may be uh, somewhat uh, true to my life and and this is something that again i don't think a lot of other kids in other ages really experienced because I don't think there was ever anyone who wanted to become, say, um, a Rubik's Cube player or a professional hula hoopist. Then again, I could be wrong on the path of professional hula hooping, but um, the point is. The idea of video games as being 
a means to make a living is something that is way more possible now than it used to be. And so a lot of people are going to be always asking about this. So we need to kill the witch and the lieutenant and probably there's going to be some other quests along the line and I am right about that. Excuse me. Sure, I would love to help you retrieve your steel. Blah, blah, blah. Shipments, great. Because shipments and stuff is a good idea. Anyways, uh, so in any case, um, that concept of, uh, well, let me just... I shouldn't do I shouldn't do housekeeping things while I'm actually playing either. Hang on, let me take care of this real quick. Oh my pretty. My pretty birdie. Alright, um let's make this smaller. There we go. Cause I actually have like a, a, a document that 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 there there is a point to all of this rambling, I swear. Um so, yes, uh, what was I? Rambling. Yeah, so when they were asked, so when the people who were living right around, and that was Adam, Heather, Beige, and Graham, who were at PAX East this weekend, when they were asked about what's a tip for doing streaming, one of the things that Graham specifically said is have a niche. You should have a niche, and... You should do a thing that, um, you should do a thing that you want to do and be really professional and consistent about doing it. And one of the other things that I do, or that I'm trying to do, and I'm on a more consistent basis, is to write articles and reviews and, uh, you know, get back to writing full time, but with my current day job demands, I'm probably I'm I'm not gonna be able to get a chance to do as much of that as I would like in the weeks to come because it it's a long story. But the point is that my original plans that I'd had that I was ramping up to do are gonna have to be put on hold. I need to find another way to satisfy my creative and analytical urges. So that's when I decided to retool my stream. Um, one thing that I love to do is I love to talk about what is important to me. And I think that I have an under, underheard voice. Um, I've been reading up about, well, okay. When I say reading up, I mean I've been reading the Wikipedia articles about uh, the Philippine-American War. And one of the things that they mentioned about Philippine immigration is that very often uh, Filipinos are more likely to be assimilated into U.S. culture than other immigrants from East Asia or even Southeast Asia because of the shared history between the U.S. and the Philippines, etc., etc. But at the same time, as someone who is Filipino-American, there are a lot of things that make us different from being, quote, regular Americans. And so I think that there, I think that I have a unique voice. I think that there are a lot of important things that I have to say with regards to my particular generation, which is apparently Generation X. Um, it's been named different things over the years. Um, and... But if I can't do that by writing, because I don't have the time that... I, I'm not going to have the time that I used to have anymore then I need to find another way to do that. And I think that what I'm going to be doing is doing this in podcast form. But I also like playing video games. 
and I want to really finish this uh, expansion and I want to read the story. I want to know what's going on in this story. So why not combine the two things? Finish uh, learning more about the World of Warcraft lore and do quests and talk about characters and whatnot, but also talk about other things that tickle my fancy in the uh, world of being a geek, being a person of color, and being a person of color who is also a geek. So, with that in mind, um, I'm still keeping the name too early for streaming because it's a, it's too good of a name to keep to, to, to give up. Too early for streaming is a fantastic name. Um, and I'm not going to give it up. It's too good. It really is just too good. But, in the meantime, um, I, I drew up a list of topics for today, and if you see me looking off to the right side or not paying attention to uh, my surroundings, it's probably because I am looking at this document in the hopes of being able to keep myself on track, as well as also uh, hopefully looking at chat for anybody who comes into the room at this time. So, so this is basically a new pilot episode of my new stream, my new stream format. Oh, but that's right, I can skin these things. I keep forgetting I can skin things! <sighs> but there's no loot. That's not fair. Um, so, what do we talk, how, so how's this, how, how, how's the format gonna go? Well, uh, the first, uh, section of this podcast is talking about this week and World of Warcraft reading. As you may or may not be aware, I am currently a guildmaster on the Alliance side of uh, things on the Moonguard server. The, the guild is called the Republic of Snorch. It is related to the Lodi Grun, uh, uh, um, it's a Lodi Grun, Lodi Grun, Grun esque sort of place because most of the people who are in my guild are fans of Loading Ready Run and also are members of the um, Moonguard Horde side guild, of course, Horde, of course, um, who are also uh, named Snorsh. Like, they're Snorsh United, but they didn't think to get the Republic of Snorsh name. I think our guildmaster was originally Ben Almar, um, and then he unfortunately. Um, got too busy to continue to administer the guild, so it is now being led by a consortium of people um, who lead the raids and take care of guild matters and help uh, invite people and blah blah blah. Um, we raid twice a week on Thursday evenings and Sunday evenings. Thursday 8 p. 8 30 p.m. Central uh, Sunday, 11 p.m. Central. And we are currently in the middle of the end game content for the Legion expansion. Excuse me. Legion expansion during the, uh, trying to do, trying to get Attack of the Curve, Ahead of the Curve, sorry. Trying to get the Ahead of the Curve achievement before Battle for Azeroth. Uh, is officially released on August um, 14th, August 14th of this year. And the one part we are currently stuck at is the Kavanesh Fara, which is a very, very tough fight. Um, everybody I know who has already done it agrees that it is the toughest fight in hero heroic, and once you get that fight down, um, everything else is somewhat smooth sailing. <clears throat> Well, as smooth as, you know, and and game content is in a guild. And because we're not like a super serious, oh my god, must raid every week kind of guild, it's been hard for us to get a big enough number of people and a good enough mix of DPS and ranged, uh, DPS that's ranged and uh, melee to do some of the, uh, uh, mechanics for uh, the sections. Like, ANR is one where 
one time we did not have enough range. Like I was one, of, I was one of the few ranged people in the defensive A and R scenario on heroic, and that was. I also think we had maybe ten or eleven people rating that time, and that was not fun. But we did it. But it was not fun. And uh, so this past Thursday, one of our guild members or guild guild friends people who aren't in the guild but who still raid with us, uh, wanted to invite a friend of theirs to come and join the raid. And we said sure. We invited the person who happened to who, uh, happened to be an undergeared hunter. And I'm always glad to see more hunters because hunter gets a bad rep. Hunter gets a bad rep which is unfortunately justly applied to many hunters. Um, it is the easy, I mean, it is the easiest class to start with. It was my starting class, and I think one of the reasons why I love it so is because I just haven't found anything else yet that provides me with as much satisfaction. Um, Warlock might be close, though. I'm getting really, I got really fond of, uh, Demonology Warlock, and, um, that also might be my second favorite class right now. Notice that both of them are ranged and both of them are um, pet uh, classes. So, um, so, you know, another hunter, which is always good. And the cool thing was that because that person was undergeared and I was not, I was able to uh, whisper them and let them know whenever I had good things to provide. And so it felt good being able to give the good gear to them, even though it was a different spec. That person was playing Beastmaster. I'm currently uh, using Worksman during the heroic raids because it's one of the pr progress the most on. I missed a vizier. I totally missed a vizier. Oh no. It's the one across the bridge, isn't it? Yeah, it's the one across the bridge. Dang it. Anyways, so it was really cool to do that. But I think the coolest part for me was that the person who joined was a, a female. And I'm very, very proud of the fact that the Snorsh United Guild is so welcoming and so egalitarian when it comes to the people who raid. Because we're not, oh my god, so serious raiders, it's easy for someone who's never raided before to feel welcome in the group because we we don't harp on people's mistakes. We're most of the time very um, forgiving if people forget how to do a mechanic. Although maybe after the fourth or fifth time of them doing a thing that they're not supposed to do, we may get a little upset. Um, but we're also pretty good at trying to explain things in a way that doesn't make people feel dumb either. We try. We, there are some times that we haven't really succeeded very well, but we do try. And uh, so if you're looking for a, you know, super serious waiting time and where everybody's on time and um, no, there's no goofing around between poles or, you know, Anything like that, this would definitely not be the greeting group for you, but it is for me. You wish to see the power of the Empire firsthand, little uh, one? Sure, so I could do that. Yet, I could use some entertainment. Okay, sure, hold on. Let me have some coffee first, if you don't mind. Ooh. Alright, let's do this. Um, hello. Hello? Hello? What is it? Um... Did somebody already defeat you? Oh, right. I gotta turn in these quests first. Well, let me do that. Let's just step back here. And do this. Mm-hmm. Yep, got your blades back. 
and we got the resources. <laughs> uh, yes, I will help you get your mace back. Wait, wait, you're not coming with me? You should be coming with me. Come with me. Get, help me get your stuff back. Hi. Shall we? I think we shall. Some healing. Uh, what? No. What? Okay. Okay. So I didn't do that part right. That's fine. Everything's fine. Let's do that. Nope, can't do that. We'll do that. Yeah. Oh well, okay, I told you didn't do that part of the video there again. I uh Well you know what though? Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine because my pet's at full health. Bonkers. Finally did that part right. Dang it. And yet I am low on health, but not as low as him. Come on. Get it together, lady. Come on. Yeah. Woo. Yep. That was indeed a battle. Yes, I have your mace. Can I get it back? No. Can you give me a helmet? What? <sighs> Yay! Comprehensive outpost construction guide. Yay! Going back. <clears throat> Yay! 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 Thank you for working for me. Woohoo! Where you lead, I will follow anywhere that you tell me to. When you lead, you believe in me, I will follow where you lead. That's for all the, uh, Get more girl fans out there. I wonder if that was on purpose. That has to be on purpose. Why well, yes, I will take extra XP. And I will give it to you. I can't do those yet. And the reason why I came back here for us to do this. And what is it that you wanted? Nope. Oh, still doing that. Ooh. Did something here. Ooh, they knew some of the spires. Sure, okay. Just the next section. Right, uh, Exodus, Sheriff, sure, Bird Folk. Okay. So that's a breadcrumb towards the next area. Frost bulbs, booming thing. Huh. Maybe some other time. I'm still trying to get through this story. 
So this I'm waiting on. Do I have a sharp black cave? Where is that? Oh right. Hmm. Burning okay, yeah, that's burning legion stuff. Still waiting on that. Um, still waiting on that. Still waiting on that. And okay, so but there has to be more stuff in Talagor that I haven't in, in the Tanan no. Talagor that I haven't done yet. Because there is totally a lot of stuff I haven't done yet. Um There's some stuff here. There's something there. But that's not grand. We haven't been to Shatra City yet. But there are quests here, so I think that's where we should aim for. Um, six, seven, five. Next area for faux questing. Alright. Alright, so let's get back that way. Let's also maybe there has to be a way. Nope. Let's stop that. Remove all waypoints. All right. Let's do this again. Mm, blah 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 blah. Talador. Here we go. Way Talador. show. Alright, that's much better. Well. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. Durotonic Rev. Go. Hey, why not? Looks like I already had that flight bath. Yay! So anyways, while we're flying, um, I should finish what I was talking about, which was uh, the raid and the gilding. So, um, this week we got up to um, Raxmith, which is the section just before the Coven of Shivara. And as usual, there was the usual, as usual, there was guild smack talk and making jokes and talking about food and other things like that. And at one point during the raid, me and a guild member named Julie were trading bits of uh, show tunes, lines from show tunes back and forth. And another uh, two other guild members were talking about uh, talking about slash bemoaning the lack of adequate pockets in women's clothing, which prompted one of our other guild members to say, you know what, there's a lot of women in this raid. To which I responded, yes, yes. And I think that's great. I love being in a group of uh, mixed gender uh, gamers because there's an appreciation for both genders and both abilities and both kinds of people who game. Um, now that's not to say that I haven't played with, again, and, and and I think many of the other women on our guild would agree, or the women who ga who game with us agree, that we like playing the game. We like being good at what we do. No demon will set foot in Akindun on my watch. Yay! Good on you. What business have you? I hope you're right. The dead grow. We will have if justice. Something truly dark is coming. That's not good. Who's talking? Where are they? I wasn't even facing them. Anaria Shola. Okay. Okay, minor. Be ready for anything. I will try. Our enemies you. will fall. Sure. Oh. Gemma lights. 
Remember the sun well. And you. A new Lady Eliathrin. Oh no! Mm-hmm. Sure, I can just like do it. Stay the course. I feel pretty good at doing that. I think I, can, I I think I know how to do that. We must recover Cariboon at all costs. March forward the moment you see a hole in their line. What's Cariboon? Why is there more text? No, there is not. No, the heart of Falcon, dude. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we I can go persevere. get that. Um, let's see. Let's actually go straight that way. And we'll get this guy in the way. Hello. No, I don't think so. I'm not gonna let that happen. Um, but yeah, it feels really good to be playing with people who can laugh and joke about things that I care about in addition to the things that all geeks care about. Like, and there's a difference. I mean, there really is a big difference between things that I care about as a person and that things of things that geeks in general care about. Like, I care about making sure that when when one is uh, seeing depictions of uh, a, a Japanese uh, pro uh, property that they stay as close to the original script as possible, but there are, of course, certain exceptions. I'm looking at your Excel saga um, because, you know, we we can totally go into the localization of Excel saga at some point, but not now. Um, but, uh, again, and that's something that all geeks care about. What I care about is also making sure that the characters on the covers of the uh, English language versions are depicted not as um, like depicted as closely aligned with who the characters are and not what the fan service pictures look like. I'm concerned about that. And of course, you know, there is tons of fan service in um, anime, but same thing applies to comic books and other geeky pop culture types of uh, properties. And and it feels good to be able to be in a group of people who not only feel the same way that I do about a thing, but even if they don't, they're not going to automatically poo-poo it because they don't know that people like me exist. You know? It's like someone who is a Republican, say, not wanting to be lumped in with all the other Republicans who are giving what Republicanism is a bad name. And, um, and actually, um, which is funny because one of my oldest friends from high school is a Republican, but, and is also an opera geek, and, uh, is one of the biggest Republicans I know. So, um, and I just wanted to point that out as being something that was very important about my, that's very important about the spaces I find myself gaming in and being and the cultures I find myself being a part of and that kind of drives a lot of what I do when it comes to volunteering um, in geek organizations and um, the kinds of causes I'm likely to support and the kinds of people who I'm likely to support support you champion those causes. 
which is a great segue to talk about um, something that also happened this past weekend, which was a blizzard. There was a blizzard here in Minneapolis. Um, and I want to say it's the first blizzard I've had the quote pleasure of experiencing, I think. Like there've been really big snowstorms in the past in my five years of living here in, in, in Minneapolis. But I want to say that this is the first blizzard I've been through where it lasts for over um, a day and where their official warnings, etc. I mean, those winter, st I'm familiar with winter storm warnings. I'm totally familiar with that. That's not what happened yesterday, like Friday night, uh, Friday night. Oh, that's not, yeah, that's not what, that's not what happened Friday night in this morning, uh, until seven. What happened this morning was a freaking blizzard, okay? Um, you had people getting stuck on the snow. You had, you know, traffic ground to a halt. All those kinds of things that you associate with blizzards. All of that happened over the weekend. And thank goodness I was not anywhere, but my husband was. Um, so my husband, I don't talk about a lot about what he does for a living, which is on purpose. Um, unless it's uh, relevant. And today, it's relevant to talk about the fact that he was at a um, DevOps conference yesterday called Minibar. And what Minibar is, is what Minibar is, is an unconference. And if you don't know what an unconference is, an unconference is a, it's, it's, it's like, it's like a professional convention, except nothing is officially organized, which is kind of hard to grok the concept of, and I'm not sure I understand it either. Like imagine, if you will, being an academic where, and going to the a conference to give a paper where you don't know in advance who's going to be speaking or you don't know who else is going to be attending, or you don't know, um, no one's decided the order of presentation, that sort of thing. I th at least I think that's how these quote, unconferences work. Of course I've never been, and I wasn't going to go to this one either because A, I'm not a DevOps person and B, it's Blizzard, but my husband did decide to go out to this conference with a former co with with a former co co-worker of his and he met up with another former former co-worker of his and both of them went and were there and you know and they ended up leaving early because you know lizard um but so while he was doing that i was of course reading and working on my um duties as the head of invited Hold participants for protect the wounded. oh no protect the wounded i can i wait when you say the wounded do you mean our wounded their wounded or just wounded in general you really don't mean wounded in general Keep up the defenses. Mm -hmm. Sure. Get crystals. One person covering your escape? I don't know if that's gonna be. I don't know if that's a good idea. Also, I don't think the wounded are getting up. Where are your medevacs? Where are your EMTs? There should be a class called EMT, I swear. Wait, why isn't there a class called EMT? Oh no! A ritual! I will stop it. Oh, Dionysa caught you too. Um. Uh, where was I? Oh yes! So I'm also the co-head of Invited Participants, along with Marit Hansen. We help Destroy the intruder. These souls are nearly mine. 
You know, being undead. Yeah, I think I do have to put a stop to this because the souls of people belong either A, in the afterlife, or B, inside an undead person's body. I'm just saying. Whatever it is you're using them to do, I'm not going to stand for that. And I'm also not going to kneel for that. I'm not going to bend my knee for you, etc. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. No! What? Who are you? You're Tenragor? No! He got away. Oh no. Oh. I wish I could do something about your souls, but I can't. That's sad. That's right, Brody. <sighs> Anyways, um. So plaintive. Um, I don't mind being rooted. Well, yeah, why don't you use their souls instead of the souls of the, uh, Draenor people? Like, do you really need the souls of the Draenor people? Just use your own people. You didn't have to come here. Like, what was the purpose of coming into this place, specifically? That's was something I'd like to know. Like, what was so special about this place that it was the only place you could do a ritual in? You could have done this anywhere else but here. Oops. Anyways. I keep trying to see something, but the, but I keep getting interrupted by mechanics. Um, so one of the things, again, talking about invited participant stuff and uh, thinking about cosplays and convention, conventions, and uh, one of the things that I was thinking about was based on a Facebook post by a friend of a friend. And this friend was... Uh, bemoaning the current state of cosplay in genre communities. Um, they are also from my generation of geek and anime fandom where um, back in our day no that's not a proper old lady voice. Back in my day! No that's not a good voice either. Back in my day! Oh that's better. That's so much better. Back in my day, cosplay was fun and exciting for the kids, and we encouraged each other, and we didn't think about doing this for money or fame. We just wanted to show off our craft and, and make friends. But actually, back in the day, there was still drama. There was still drama back in the day. I remember, um... Concentrate, sisters. We must maintain Okindun's defenses. Okay. Okay. You gonna say anything else? Concentrate, sisters. We must maintain Okindun's defenses. I'm not your sister. Okay. Yes, I have the stuff. Yay! Okay. And the Nightmare on the Tomb. Hello, Liadrin. The eternal sun guides us. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for letting me know that. Okay. Farewell. The Legion won't give up so easily. Arkham Dune is too valuable to them. Okay. Excellent. Have your soul binders meet me at my camp. I intend to stop Terengor before he unleashes more demons. Okay.
Well, but I'm gonna do this mine thing first, if you don't mind. The light comes for you. If you don't mind. Oh, that was terrible. Okay, so let's do this. If something they asked us to do this part first, so we're gonna do that. But before we do that, we're also going to use our elephant to get there so that we can properly sell some stuff because our bags are getting full again. Um, so this this article was about, sorry, the person wants to money the, the, the state of cosplay today. And I remembered because I was working on, con, con, on stuff for Convergence, which is our local sci-fi fantasy convention, I remembered that one of our uh, heads or, yeah, I think she's a head of the accessibility and inclusion department, but her name is Brianna Lawrence, and the reason why I thought of her okay. is because um, she's a woman who talks about cosplaying, and the person in the Facebook in the, per the person in the Facebook thread said that they felt that it was it's really not good for a woman today to be fat in the cosplay community whereas Bucci she goes by Bucci cosplay whereas Bucci talks about being a fat woman of color who, cl who cosplays a lot so in the, uh, whenever I get this uploaded to YouTube, I'm going to put links in the description, the doobly-doo, as they say. Um, I'm going to put links in the description about, um, a, which is a link to the article, where she specifically refutes the fact that, and again, she wrote this in 2017, she refutes the fact that cosplay is terrible, and her, her theory is that cosplay... There isn't more drama in cosplay, there are just more people willing to speak up about it. And I think that's great. Um, Bear King Crystal, blah blah blah, floating in the mine. Sure, I can help with that. And Rare Read Above. Okay. Oh no! Disperse the, the, the moths. Do I have a moth? Do I have a moth right now? Yes, I do. Do I? No, I was gonna sell things. Let me do that first. I keep forgetting what I do. Uh, ooh. Eavesdrop on fans. What does that do? Burning Legion missive? Nope, wrong thing. This right thing. There it is. Um, okay, still not doing selling things. Okay, so, that's a thing. Uh, let alone. Sell, sell, sell. Sell. Sell, sell. Let's just sell all this stuff. Hand me down cloak? Oh, that's clever. Yep, it was indeed previously worn. Uh, this is my boomstick. Okay, I think that's everything. Okay, <clears throat> so. Oh, yes, I was going to get my other moth out. It's a moth eat moth world. And you were also tameable. But I believe I have one of you already. Yep. Moth versus moth. Fight. Oh, must be used with low health. Well, let's just keep this. There we go.
go. And ah. Right before it died. Well done, me. Just white hips. like these so much. Because you can't just... You can't just uh, fake your way... Not fake. You can't just be on autopilot while doing these. Yeah. One more. Come over here. Oh, yeah, good. Gonna finish this one before I turn everything else back in. But let's heal you. Okay. So anyways, um, so that was a good article that I read this week. Um, and the site that I found it on was Twin Cities Geeks, which is the local um, geek-oriented magazine, online magazine, um, run by Hal... Last name I forget and Madeline Vasily. Interesting. Okay, so... It's okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. Yeah! Of course you're gonna act like that towards somebody in the horde. Okay. Yes, I do. Important part of culture. Who's Kaylee Nora? We will persevere. Um, okay. Yeah. Farewell. Okay. Um, okay. You welcome me in that you told me that my allies are shit. Fine. Yep, that's me. Anaria Shola. Okay. Okay. And sure. Salama Ashala Nore. Um. All right. All right then. Jump. Ouch. There's got to be more than one in the entire in that entire uh, minecart. Anyways, um, Twin Cities Geeks focuses on events in the local geek community, and one of the things that happened recently was Anime Detour. Now, I have not been to an anime convention in quite some time. I want to say the last one I went to was in 2013, and that was right after I moved here. 
Um, for reasons that I don't feel like going into right now, I kind of got burned on, burned out of uh, anime conventions and a lack of source, a lack of a reliable source of income prevented me from being able to buy and consume more anime. So, and I refuse to, I refuse to, uh, pirate regularly. And I'm actually really glad now that we have options that are other than pirating. I'm really happy for that. Being as being someone who does not, uh, being as someone who has other things that I need to do with my money right now, um, knowing that there are free or low cost ways to watch anime these days is really exciting. And I hope to be able to maybe do some reviews about anime uh, in the next uh, editions of this stream. So, you're welcome. So, Anime Detour is the larger of the anime conventions that are here in New York City. The one I went to uh, in 2013 was called Anime Fusion. It was very, very small. But Anime Detour is a larger convention and that was held in actual downtown Minneapolis. It's been quite some time since I've been to an anime convention that is located in the heart of a city. I want to say the last one I attended of that type was in 2007 or 2008 and that was New York Comic Con that was held that actually wasn't even held in the heart of the city that was more like held in the outskirts of Manhattan by the um, by the uh, Hudson River and that I may have to weave stories about the last time I went to um, the New York Comic Con some other time, but um, the, yeah, I haven't been to many conventions that were held in a city, so, and I wanted to see what it was like. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to go last weekend, but once again, Twin City Geeks came through for us, and again, link, I will link to an article that was published by them about Anime Detour. And the consensus was that the it seemed as if the only problem that the reviewer had was with parking. And that's something that is unavoidable because downtown is, whenever you put a convention in a big city, parking is always going to be a problem. And that's something I remembered from Baltimore, going to Otakon. That's something Bellana. that I remember from San Diego when I went to that Comic Con. <laughs> no, not Baltimore Comic Con, Baltimore and Otakon, San Diego and Comic Con, and then um, getting to and from the Javits Center from uh, Midtown uh, also. A problem so so parking is gonna be a problem it seems but everything everything else seems to be laid out well and some other um, scuttlebutt I heard is that they're pretty excited about being in the downtown area for their convention and I think next year I'm definitely gonna try and go um, so I'll put a link to the article in my show notes um, and uh, also, when I upload this, upload this to YouTube, words and all, and uh, I'm really excited about that. So the last thing that I want to talk about um, is going to be, yes, I did got your stuff for research. <sighs> okay. All right. It looks like I am killing hand. something to get its heart. I can do that. Boom. That must be that thing right there. 
Aoth friend. Hello. Come, give me your heart. Done, my friend. Yeah. Easy peasy. Oh, I'm sorry. Did did I hurt you? Yeah. The answer is yes. Yes, I did. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to talk about today is something that happened in the world of politics or maybe not just politics but social change social change and social justice because yes i am one of those social justice warriors i prefer to call myself a social a social justice admin and administrative assistant but um focus and crystal sure Okay. We will Hi, have justice. Victory lies ahead. Sure thing. Death to all who oppose us. Okay. So this encounter is not going to happen here. I'd like to have that cooldown back, please. Yay! I did it! <gasps> a letter! No, who's Astalor? Oh, yeah. Interesting. So they built this just for this part of the we will persevere. instance or the encounter. So now this area should have. Yep! Everything is fine. Well, no. Everything is still not fine, but she is no longer there. Fascinating. It's fascinating how this works. Sure. Yep. I will think about that. Tear stained letter. What's this tear stained letter business about? Let's find out. But first, let's get past these folks. Yes, yes, I will get back to my topic. I can do that while I can do that while running. So, uh, I am a social justice administra administrative assistant, and no, really, because I work at a nonprofit which is dedicated to social justice. And uh, but of course, I'm not going to tell you what the name of that nonprofit because I know how the internet works. And I know how people on the internet can be, which is to say terrible. And um, so, of course, there's been, just like, it's easy to say that cosplay, the state of cosplay is terrible now, compared to, quote, how it used to be. Just like it's easy to say that, it's also easy to say that it's easy to say that the state of race relations and um Race relations, great race relations, and gender and health disparities for minorities, and just 
the problems of minorities and immigrants in general. It's, it, it's easy to say that it has felt like things have gotten worse than they have ever been. And I think that's not true either. I think that the only reason why we're saying that it's worse is that there's more focus being placed upon that. And I think there's no example that would typify that than what happened to uh, this. When did it happen? Hold on. Let me look at my notes, which I didn't actually take notes for this part. When did this happen? I think it happened on Friday. When did this happen? On the 14th. So this was uh, Friday. So Friday, uh, there were two men who were in Philadelphia and going to a Starbucks. And they went to, they decided to hang out at the Starbucks. The dark times will and pass. because they were meeting a business associate there. And they had asked if they could use the bathroom because they were going to wait for their business associate. But they didn't order anything. They just came in and said, hey, we'd like to use the bathroom. And I don't know. It's not clear. No, I just realized. I just clicked through the quest. Let me do this real quick. Death Fangs. Oh, no. Sure. Yes. I have a feeling something about Naomi is going to be a big deal in this chapter. Okay. Okay, Dreadlord. Okay, cool. Alright, what else is happening in this little camp? Nothing? One more thing. One more thing. Okay. Oh no! No! Demonic venomous folk. Not good. Um, so... Oh, I love that there's a little... Is that a little picnic area? That's a little picnic area. Of course. Of course he always would do that in their camp. Of course. <sighs> Anyways. Um. Do I have one of these yet? I don't think I do. Then let's get one. Let's get one of these. See if I can get one of those. And yes, I can. Excuse us. Yeah. Oh no. This is going to be too horrible. Oh no. Should I? Well, it's kill it's killing me. Let's do this. Oh no, I know what I know what I can do. Hang on, hang on. Here we go. I have it. Do I have it on my bar? No, it's not on my bar. Crap. Where is it? Where to go? Where to go? Come on. You're losing time. Where did it go? There. What? No! Run! I can't watch. Whew! I did not want to be privy to the idea of a mommy river beast attacking its kids, okay? I did not want to do that. That's not me. <sighs> All right. In honor of that occasion, we are going to call this one cannibal. No, that's too mean. Um, mean want me. There we go. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. Anyways. Um, wait, what are there? Let's 
Let's make sure we've got the abilities set. Growl, tenacity, tenacity, good. All right. Um, so, they, so they wanted to wait for their associate, and so they went to the Starbucks, and they asked to use the bathroom. And I don't know whether or not they were granted permission, but apparently the store manager thought that they should not get to hang out at the Starbucks while they were waiting for their associate, but that he wanted them to leave, and so we called the police. And the police came by and said, hey, uh, what's your business here? Um, you've been asked to leave, you're trespassing, and really all they were doing was just waiting for their business associate. And this was corroborated by the business associate, who eventually came, and so, so he was meeting his black clients, at this Starbucks and <laughs> yeah get out of here sure I will help find your friends is that a quest nope doesn't look like it's a quest but I'm gonna try and do it anyways um Yay! Yep. Are you a friend of hers? Am I gonna get? Yep. Mhm. Mm this is an un. This is a hidden quest. Like I don't think this is a quest. Otherwise, do I have trivial things turned on? Yes, I do. Huh. That's interesting. Oh, you know what? Do I have Play Dead or do I just have Feign Death? I don't think I have Play Dead, do I? I have Feign Death. I don't have Play Dead. I'm not going to get that till 110. Alright. But I still, sh I still should at least put Feign Dead on there. So let me fix that. Oh, move. Up. <sighs> okay. You know what? Oh no, that's not gonna help. So where are we putting this? Well, that's where you put it for now. Actually, no. You should put this... Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's put that there for now. Okay. Because once I get to 28, that's where it should be. But then my pet stays alive. <sighs> No, I don't think so. Also, did I turn off? This should go here. This stand can go here. And wow. Can go here. Better. Okay. Um And so when the, um, when the associate told the police that, the associate told the police that basically it was discriminatory for the, for them to have targeted his clients. I need a target. 
and was basically appealing to everybody else in the store saying, hey, this isn't a problem. And it went viral and there have been apologies from the CEO of Starbucks and of course the Philadelphia Chief of Police uh, defended their decisions, which um, technically, well, okay, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a law enforcement expert. And so all of my opinion forthcoming should totally be taken with a grain of salt. But I have been a store supervisor. And I've been a person who has had to decide, do I let this person stay in my store? Like that's definitely something that I've had to decide. Um, one time there was a, a person who was very, very drunk because our store was in Uptown, which is one of the more gentrified areas of Minneapolis, but it used to not be so gentrified. So the mix of the people who would shop at my grocery store, you had a cross mix between um, upwardly mobile college students who were in the workplace for the first time, and then you had uh, young urban professionals who were also finding their way f for the first time. You had um, people who still wanted to live in the city but didn't feel like being suburbanites living there. And then you had all of the older people who used to live there who still live there and were now residing in senior citizen centers and taking their chartered buses to get to the store. And of course there was the homeless people. Lots and lots of homeless people. We knew them by name and face. We knew them on sight. We helped them buy food. We tried to get them not to panhandle. And there was always the There, and of course, you know, all the drunk people going to and from the bars and the hot spots, who we also had to worry, uh, worry about. And I remember this one time where there was this dude who, I think he was a white dude, he was so drunk. Like, he was so very drunk and also panhandling and kind of just bothering people outside the store and most of the time what we were asked to do was just to try and get them to move along and if they didn't have if they weren't using their money or their benefits cards to buy stuff they had to move along and i remember what that feels like i remember what it feels like to say you know, I know it's cold outside, I know you don't have anything to eat, but you can't keep harassing our clients for money. You can't, you can't be in here asking our patrons to give you money for a cup of coffee. Because they would do that, some of them would do that. And, but that's not what these gentlemen were doing. They were sitting there, minding their own business not saying anything to anybody and just waiting for someone. And I can't tell you how many times I've been to the, um, been to a Starbucks in, um, near the, uh, oh, Green Line, you, was it Union Square? No, 14th Street, it's the 14th Street Station Green Line stop so many freaking spiders! Too many spiders! Stop! Spider, please. Wait. 
Where are these stupid crystals? Where are the F are these crystals? Oh great, I have to use the bathroom too. I may end up putting this on hold for a while. Oh. I also can't do that because I don't have my pet with me. Fancy that. Here. Let's keep my crap a knife. There we go. Maybe you will give me better luck in finding more of these stupid crystals! I bet you one of them is supposed to be up there. But I may have already gotten it. Where is the other crystals? I need to use the bathroom! I was popping up here. Come on. Please, please, please. That was kind of ominous. I still need to use the bathroom. I swear. Okay, F it. I'm going back to my gear center for a while. Gonna take a break. I'm going to look up where to find the rest of these stupid crystals, and I shall be back shortly. Don't go away. This is Trisha Lynn, and I'm talking to you from the past. Normally, this is where I would run a promo for an upcoming project of mine, or announce the next time I'll be doing a live recording. However, since this is my first episode, I don't have anything like that planned. Instead, here is where I'll invite you to send me feedback about this video. Do I need to speak more slowly? Did you enjoy what I had to say? Do you have any comments of your own? Leave a comment below, and one lucky person will win a $5 gift certificate to the fast food restaurant of your choice. Offer is valid until April 30th, 2018. All the normal contest rules for the state of Minnesota apply. Now back to the show. Hey, we're back. So it's apparently a really good thing that I decided to look at Wowhead to figure out how to do this quest because apparently I was supposed to go inside a cave to do more defiling stuff or to not do more defiling stuff but to anyways um but now I can drop off these pets and pick one to keep with me so that I can get some more all right now we can go back to the screen and go back to Talador. I'm so glad I decided to uh, come back for that. Okay, let's go back there. So anyways, now I can actually talk about the thing I wanted to talk about, which was the arrests. Again, as somebody who used to work in a grocery store and had to deal with this kind of question all the time, at what point do you... At what point do you consider a person to be trespassing versus a customer versus someone who just needs your place to hang out with for a while or to hang out at for a while? 
and is it okay? So if I were that store manager, I probably would have been, I can understand being tired of people using your bathroom all the time. Again, this is something that many, uh, many a Starbucks, Starbucks manager at any of the locations which are near a major transportation hub, like the Union Square, yeah, that's it, Union Square, the Union Square Starbucks between the yellow line and the green line, um, the 456 and the NRQW. Um, that whole area is so busy with transfers and people getting in and out, people wanting, I mean, I used to, I would regularly, when I was living in Harlem, I'd take either the 123, which is the red line, or the 456 down to 14th Street, and then walk over from there to, um, Fifth Avenue, which is where my office was at the time, and um, if I was coming from the 456, I would routinely stop at the Starbucks there, like either coming to, coming from or going to the 456, I would stop at the Starbucks there, and sometimes, like, I would go there just to use the bathroom and feel like I had to buy something out of respect of, for the people who work there. Now, that's something that, shit. That's right, that there's Alliance Land and I forgot about that. I forgot that was Alliance territory. They ganked me hard. Man, there was like no escaping that. But aren't we all supposed to be working together to do this? Oh, yeah, no wonder they got me. Let's go this way. And let's also, well, I guess I didn't take out my water skimmer, did I? All right, so there's a cave here. There's a cave around here. And in this cave is gonna be one or two more of those defiler crystals. And also in the cave is going to be, all right, trees to the left of the cave. That's not the right cave. That's probably the cave. And I should probably have my white ready. Oh, what? Yep, yep. Yeah, that's right. I have a hippo. I'm, I'm sorry, a river beast. Okay, so, into the cave. You're going out slow, aren't you? Let's just let's pass, let's pass the little spiderlings. Okay, maybe we can't. Let's pass the spiderlings. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to look at. Hi. Where are you, mommy? Ooh. Yeah, you know what to do. Okay, so, Milo Crystal. And now, 
Onward. You are supposed to be following me. It is quite easy to smell undead. Instead of turn undead, you hit smell undead. Which is what I am. Yeah. There's the thing. And then apparently there's a treasure chest around here. was actually really slow. There, oh. Does it down there? Being undead, I can go down all day long. But this is really freaking deep. Ah yes, there is a floor. Okay. Oh, nothing this way. It almost like made it look like this was endless. Oh, okay. So this is not the right spot. So I already looked up here. I'm glad I'm undead because I don't have to worry about the bends. And then... down at the other thing and nothing here but it's more it said that there was a treasure chest around here anyway it's back to the story yes so I remember One of the um, crit criticisms that people are going to pull out. Why didn't the two men buy something? They could have just gotten a regular cup of coffee while waiting. They could have gotten, like, a tea. If they don't drink coffee, they could have gotten tea. They could have gotten something. And I think, in a way, part of the social contract is that, and part of the thing that people always bring out when it comes to being able to use facilities is that if you are a patron of the store and there is a public restroom and it's within code you should be allowed to use the bathroom especially for drinking coffee you should be allowed to use the bathroom if you're a patron and I think that 
the key words here are if you are a patron. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that, like, I have a feeling the store manager felt that they that 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 the, that they were in the right because they weren't patrons, and he was. I believe the store manager was a, a male and a white male at that because the store manager was within his rights to ask them to leave and they didn't. That's why he did what he did. But the question was, but the question does remain, was it right? And does it really go against what a coffee store is about, or a coffee shop is about? So, anyways, like I guess, what I guess so. My final answer is that my stance is that while the manager had every right to arrest anyone for trespassing, because of the nature of his business, he should not have done so. He should not. He should not have arrested those men for trespassing. It, it should not have been... That was not the right thing to do. And that's just how I feel. Anyway, so, this has been Trisha Lynn. This has been Too Early for Streaming. This has been the introduction of the new format for my show. Um, I'm going to hopefully put this up on YouTube, maybe edit out all the unusual and uncomfortable pauses. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, well, because, you know... Yes, I'm sure it must be protected. So, yes, innocent lives I saved. Yay for me! Okay. Okay. So apparently there was a big thing about fragments. Got it. Uh, yes, it did, and I have it. Yay! Cool, one piece of heart. That's probably the last chapter of this uh, section. Yay! And so now where am I going? Oh, wait, there's a quest. There we go. This is probably going to lead me to the next area. I need to go to Telmor. So let's just run there really quickly. And then I'll park. And then I will end my stream. So, what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that... We've learned that... Um, whenever one is discussing matters of how things are versus how things used to be, the biggest, one of the biggest things to keep in mind is that now we feel like we are more empowered to say something about it. Um, I'll leave you with a story. So I was in a store recently. Um, I'm not going to mention what kind of store it is so that you are not prejudiced against um, the store's the kind of people that the store hires. So I was in a store recently with my husband and we had to wait for a manager for, um, to finish our transaction. And, uh, so we're waiting for the manager, having a good old time, talking to the, uh, uh, clerk. Manager comes after like 30 minutes. We finish our transaction. And as we're finishing the transaction, talking about other purchases we can make at the store, um, you know, joking here and there with the clerks and the manager about things, you know, that sort of nice bantery sort of thing. Um, the male manager, the white male manager says to his white male clerk, making some, says something to him about finding one of his choices inferior, claiming that by using an inferior choice, he was behaving like a girl. 
And personally, in the past, I don't know if I would have said something. But ever since um, Donald Trump was thrown into office, I've been speaking up more and more. And I said something. I said, hey, I think being called doing something like a girl is a compliment. And of course, you know, they laughed it off. They attempted to make another lighthearted joke. And, you know, we finished our transaction and we left. And, and then later on that night, we were talking about the transaction and the thing that we had purchased. And I said to my husband, what I said wasn't too confrontational, was it? And he said, no. He said he thought I handled it correctly. And I said, great. Why didn't you? And he had nothing to say. So that's it. This has been two really frustrating. Thank you all for watching going to upload, the, upload this later on. Links will be in the doobly-doo, and I will see you all next time. Bye. You've been watching the pilot episode of Too Early for Streaming a project on the Geeking Out About Twitch channel at www.twitch.tv slash geekingoutabout. The game I was playing was the Warlords of Draenor expansion of World of Warcraft on the Proudmoore North American server. The music in this episode was Roma Part 2 by Grey Guy, Dub the Uke by Kara Square, and Flower by Doxent Sigmund. All of these tracks were licensed under a Creative Commons attribution and or non-commercial 3.0 license and are hosted at ccmixture.org. The software I used to create this episode was Audacity by Audacity Team and VideoPad Professional by NCH Software. Again, thank you for watching and please visit our website at geekingoutabout.com dot com.